702 I have on my watch. Good evening, welcome. Let's see if we actually have a quorum here. So, uh, hi, are you a representative from a Shaftesbury? From Shaftesbury. Yeah. Okay, we have a. I don't know you. I'm Jim Carl. That's right. Superintendent. I don't know any of you. All right. We'll work on Aaron. Aaron. We'll work on Aaron. Yeah. Morning. Right. Nice to meet you, Aaron. Yeah. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven members here. So we need to do a little housekeeping first to see uh, uh, what do we have? Twelve members. So we're, we're there. Twelve. Hmm? Twelve. Four. Hi, John. Hi, John. Good. Good. Um, two from Powell, two from Shaftesbury, four from Bennington, uh, one from Woodward, whom I live in. You know, Bennington has so we're not even 12, so we're six, eight, nine. All right. All right. Correct. Shaftesbury, Powell. Mm -hmm. Jeff said he was coming. Jeff League said he okay. was coming, so. Two from Shaftesbury, it should be two from Powell, Laura's not here. One from Woodford, four from Bennington, that's nine. Yeah. Okay, so we certainly have a quorum. So the first order of business we have uh, is to elect a chair so that the superintendent is not running the meeting. So any nominations? Dick France. I'll decline that. Oh, Thanks yeah. for the thought, yeah, Josh. <laughs> that was a mean thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I know that to you, Dick. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Jeff League since he has some experience with this group, if he's willing. Second. Good. Um, we better wait till he's here. Yeah. Yeah. He told me he didn't want to do it. So, <laughs> so why don't we, all right, why don't we, uh, you want to proceed without a chair? Why not? We, okay. we've, <laughs> we've so let me, well let me give you a couple updates of where we are. I did receive an email from North Bennington today. So let me uh, read that. I got this at uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, Jed, Jim, we wanted to keep you and other committee members in the loop as to our current position to not join the committee at this time. After thorough examination of our options, it has become clear that we offer nothing and gain nothing by joining. In fact, we believe that the other districts could benefit from the exploration of options previously not available to them under the MUUSD model. Either way, the state will do what it can do once our often status has been recognized, that is to put us where we would be if we join now or not. The nuance there is that we are, look, we are not locked into that decision now, as we prefer the flexibility to explore yet discovered options that better serve our um, district's goals. Should there be none, one option is to be placed into the new union by the state precisely where we would be as part of the committee now. We're happy to help the committee in any way we can. We hope that our absence will be accepted as providing opportunity to the operating districts to find a solution that is best to all of them. Uh, Matthew Patterson. So, uh, let me sign my name that I'm present and then. So I'm not really sure that that's kind of like a opening <laughs> uh, downer maybe because uh, I don't know what where that leaves us. Um, as far as the Mount Anthony Union District, which North Bennington is part of. So uh, we're going to have to work around that. In my discussion with Steve Stitzel, the school attorney, he had asked me yesterday before I got this email whether we were going to move forward um, with, with or without North Bennington. And I said at the time we did because what my understanding previously from North Bennington was they were going to wait to see what this committee did as far as the governance model, that they would join us if the governance model was hybrid governance model um, and, and uh, the modified union, unified school district, and that all districts would be advisable as opposed to necessary which if those of you might remember, that's what we disbanded the first committee with and then we got the ruling that we couldn't form the study committee with those stipulations. It was up to this committee 
to decide what stipulations, if any. So, um, for now, I think we move forward, but we're going to have that. That's going to that's going to hit us quickly as far as uh, you know, how do you disband a Union School District, Mount Anthony, that has a member in it that isn't at the table for that discussion. So. Nelson, I'll give you the email that I read from Matt Patterson so you can get caught up on that. Yeah, we have park over by the CDC. There's yeah. something going on. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here tonight. And uh, we have not elected a chair yet because we're waiting to see if, uh, when Jeff Lee gets here, if he'll accept that position. So, so I, it's uh, still me. Can we work on a vice chair so that we, we're going to have to do that anyway, are we? We are. So we could elect that unless Jeff wants to be the vice chair, not the chair, because you indicated that he doesn't want to be the chair. We had some conversation yeah. about it. I'd but like to, I'd like to nominate Mr. Campbell and let them. Oh wait a minute, out. let's wait. <laughs> 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 yeah. Why don't we wait till Jeff gets here? See if he'll do it. If he'll do it. If he won't do it. Uh, okay. Then, then let's talk. I'm, I'm a non-voting member of this. No, so. oh, okay. You're not right. one of Pownell's representative. No, you're right. So, John's so Pownell and Lori. So I'm a non-voting member. Okay. So if I was chair, chairs usually don't vote. Just be aware. So I would throw my head in the ring for that. But be aware I can't vote. So I can't break any ties. I can't do any, anything other be here than add my two cents. Yeah. Maybe he'll be it. Yeah. Speak. Yeah. Maybe he'll be it. Congratulations, Jeff. No. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody will be it. So, Jeff, uh, we don't have a chair yet. I'm still running the meeting. There was a motion made and seconded to make you chair, but the discussion was to wait until you got here because it was some indication that you did not want that position. I mean, I think right now we're short at work, mm. so I can't commit to anything more. Um, that's why I'm just coming from now. Good. Right. So, thank you. Sharon, so he's if, I had, if I had more time, I would say yes. So he's declining. So I will take nominations for the chair of the Act 46 study committee. Are there any other nominations? I nominate Mr. Campbell. <laughs> we have a second. <laughs> we have a second. Was that for Donna? Yeah. For Donna Campbell. You know, I really am not the most knowledgeable person in the room here. There are other people that know a lot more about this that have been I through this. The chair only has to have knowledge about how to run a meeting. That's it. You're not going to let me out of this easily, are you? I'm not going <laughs> to let you out right. of it, period. I would, I, would, I, would, I would be honored to okay. consider it. Thank so you. Said, are there any other nominations before I close it? Yes. So, <laughs> all in favor? Nominations are closed. All in favor of this Aye. 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 Any opposed? Anybody abstaining? You were the chair, so you can conduct a uh, nominations for a vice chair. All right. Well, is there anybody that would like to nominate? We have a from you. Hey, no. You just I got just, here. You okay. just got here. <laughs> All right. Are there any nominations for vice chair? Does this mean that Jeff Lee can't do that position either? I mean, it, I mean, I think I, I did vice chair last time. You know, I mean. If Donald Very can't well. do it, I mean, I'm happy to. That's my nomination. Second. Okay. I'll start. Right. I can't vote. I've got a, uh, a motion, I think. Oh. Got a nomination and a second. All, uh, any other nominations? Okay. All in favor? Thanks. Aye. 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 <laughs> so we're going to call that <laughs> unanimous. So, uh, dang. Well, I could give you a, a couple updates in. What's on the agenda is that we really should develop a calendar work plan of uh, what we're going to do. Because we're, we're facing a very tight timeline if we're going to get this done. Uh, it's a November deadline. So in reality, we need to have uh, our proposal into the Department of Education early September. Uh, to um, because the process is if we do get a proposal it goes to the Department of Education they have to put their stamp on it you've heard the name Donna Russo Savage or some of you had she is their uh, to go to person on this she um, would review it make the recommendation 
of any changes and then bring it to the uh, to the State Board of Education um, for approval. So that's our, I mean, November is the deadline to get it in, but the reality is it really is September for us, and next week is June 1st. We have a draft of articles of agreement, which are really incomplete. You, uh, some of you got those, and, uh, and I'd say we got about three quarters of the way through those articles last time I maybe stopped work. And it's a template from somewhere else given to us by our consultant, Steve Sanborn at the time. And we don't have a consultant. And I, I have a couple of leads on uh, consultants, but no commitments that anyone wants to come down here and work with us. Um, we have an inquiry into the agency of education. Is, are we still eligible for the $20,000 grant? We first got a $5,000 grant for the exploratory committee, and that, I think we spent all but maybe $2,000 of that. Okay. Most of that went to, I want to say maybe we, maybe we have like 2,400 left. Uh, the consultant for the brief period of time, there was a, a $1,500 fee first to, and then uh, the consultant after that. $1,500 fee I think went to the, uh, the Joint School Board Association, Superintendents Association, uh, who are consolidating the training and uh, of uh, consultants. So there's a twenty thousand dollar grant that Renee has. Uh, Renee uh, Gordon, the SBSU Director of Finance and Operation, has inquired about whether we can be eligible for that. Um, and the answer that we have right now is. Uh, possibly, <laughs> mm -hmm. but we don't. Um, most of the consultant, most of that grant money went to, uh, in other districts have done this, goes to legal fees and, and the consultant. When discussions with Steve Stissel, our attorney, the adequately agreement is just uh, one document that this committee would need to produce. The others that might go on is what other districts have done. It's, <laughs> 70, 75, some even longer page document that gets submitted that outlines everything that we propose to do, like, you know, and, and it's very specific, like, you know, transfer of ownership of buildings. What happens if the, you know, if we're all advisory, what happens if the public vote that one of the communities votes not to join, then in what scenario falls? That all has to be spelt out. And yeah. it's daunting without a consultant who has had the experience to do this. So, uh, and then with what I read from North Bennington tonight, and I don't know if Jeff saw See that, that uh, I, there is the what I, I find uh, distasteful option of just sitting back and seeing what the state's going to do with us because we're not going to be able to make that done. My, my concern would be what type of governance model that could result from that. So, um, so I know it sounds like a bleak picture, but I just want to be upfront about what we could be facing a, uh, a long summer of work. Um, and maybe an impossible task if I can't secure a consultant quickly. And for those of you who were on that first round, remember it took us quite a while to get a consultant and then when we voted, he really only came to two meetings. But he was doing work behind the scene for us too. And when we voted to disband, I asked if he would continue working with us as we would run a series of forums to keep the discussion going, but he declined. Uh, though it did leave the door open that once we found our direction, he might be willing to come back. So um, that would be my recommendation that this committee would uh, um, pursue the, you know, I can get somebody to come agree, but you know, the committee's gonna have to actually, we have to set up, That would be one of our tasks of the board. That committee would have to sell. Okay. Getting that done. So, mm -hmm. 
there isn't, you all got the article of agreement? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I did get an email from a company like, well, Jim, this, this is even a reference to another uh, school yeah, district in Memorial. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's, just, it's a Jim, template from somewhere else. <laughs> I don't want to. I wonder if, before you go too much further, yeah. if we should back up just a little bit, just okay. because there's some new people here, and Good I don't time. know, Aaron, who you know, uh, if anybody. Yes, but you're but let's do a let's go around and let's just do names and what town you're from uh, to make sure that we know who everybody is here, and then Good maybe point. we could um, impose on you for a brief summary of, of where we got to the last time in okay. terms of what those what those draft. Articles. So that thing that went out was in no way set in stone. It was. Well, let's get to that. Yeah. Minute. But first, let's start with introductions. Would you be willing to sure. start off? Sure. Um, I'm Erin McEnany. I'm from Shaftesbury. I'm really, really green in this whole thing. So um, Jeff I'll and I chatted a little bit. Um, my husband's kind of, he's attended meetings kind of on our behalf um, when they were going on. So he's been filling me in along the way. But it's it's a really tangled web, from what I understand, so. I agree with what you just said. I'm Nelson Brownell. I'm representing MAU here, but I'm from Palm. I'm Jeff Leake. I'm representing Shaftesbury. Um, I was on the first two versions of this committee. So and I'm Donald Campbell, and I'm on the, uh, the Bennington uh, School District part of this. I'm a citizen member, um, and I was on the first of the two. Uh, Committees just later disbanded. Uh, Jim Colfin, SBSU Superintendent. Welcome. Kayla Sakura, um, representing Bennington. I'm Amy Dobson, representing Bennington as a citizen member. John Peasley, panel. <coughs> Dick France, Woodford. And I'm Rob Plunkett. I'm part of the MAU board I'm appointed. I'm not sure of what our role is here because my reading of the statute is that we don't have a role, but I'm at all, but I'm here um, and I've been back. Good to have you here, at least until we figure out what we're doing and <laughs> what we can and can't do. I'll be happy to chime in. Yeah. All right, so uh, great that we're here, at, I guess. And it, so my recollection of this is that we, it took us about a year to decide that we were going to try on a certain model, that we were going to just see how it felt and then see how that worked out. And so we actually went through these. Um, maybe I'll let you do this part, Jim, if you'd be willing. Sort of the summary of the last year's progress. Um, well, first, the process for those who are really the SBSU, this is an SBSU committee. The SBSU voted to form the committee they had to take a vote to form it. Then it had to go to each individual board for two votes. One vote to join the committee and one vote for who their representatives were going to be. And it's supposed to be as close to proportional and our attorney determined what that is. This is uh, really the third committee that's looked at this. So we had a committee we met and uh, disbanded last August. It took a year, it did monthly, I don't want to say monthly forums in all the different districts to get input from everyone. And it really, what, one of the things we kept hearing was uh, modified unified union school district. What is that? <laughs> Simplest term, it's, it's how Mount Anthony operates, only it would be more of a pre-K through 12 district and a hybrid board model. What does a hybrid mean? There's three options for how to do governance under Act 46. Um, proportional model, which is a very simple, um, you know, take the population of what Woodford is, which is our smallest district, that's one vote, and you divide that number into every other district, or every other town, and that's how many votes they would get. That's proportional. There's county-wide or, or district-wide, which is how the CDC operates. So um, the proportionality goes out the window, but somebody from Bennington can vote for anybody regardless of where they live would be the example. 
And then the hybrid model is uh, how Mount Anthony operates, and there's uh, a pre-agreed makeup of seats by town, but everybody in the district votes on them. So that that's and that's been um, challenged before about whether that meets one man one vote as a governance model, but uh, it was. A, case in the Vermont Supreme Court, I believe it's Barnes versus Mount Anthony, it might be from like 1975, and um, it is verified that that is a valid governance model for a school board. So those are the three options for governance, and that took, took us a while to get everybody on board with how that, what governance model we should go with, because um, if I can give a summary, and some might agree and some might not agree. If, um, if you were Bennington, you wanted proportional because, I mean, or some did, because that, that's where the initial, say, disagreement came from. Because they would have the most votes on that board and they felt that was justified because they paid the biggest portion of the budget. Uh, everyone else, um, either wanted an alternative structure, which I haven't even talked about yet, uh, but if it was going to be a unified district, the only way they were going to come to the table was with the hybrid model, because otherwise they would feel that they would get outvoted by the proportional. And it kept repeatedly was pointed out how well that it works at Mount Anthony. You never really hear a breakdown of votes by what's best for my particular community versus what's best for our students. So it took a long time, but we pretty much got everyone to agree to get to that. Then there were some questions about how the committee was formed, that boards didn't know what they were voting on because the word formal wasn't used in the formation of that study that the formal, because there's a, under the law, there's an exploratory committee or a formal committee. We voted, I'm going to check the minutes, we voted to form an Act 46 study committee. Our consultant ruled that um, <clears throat> lacking the word exploratory, there was nothing else but to call it a formal committee, so it was a formal committee. But there was still some and what's the difference? A formal committee, the action that we take, if we come up with a plan, it right. doesn't go back to your committee. <clears throat> this committee has that authority of what that plan would look like. You don't take it back to your individual boards to vote on. So, you know, in a year ago, over a year ago, we were pretty rookie at this. So, there might have been some board members who didn't realize that they were voting away that authority and that's what we started to hear. So that contributed to last August's vote to disband the formal committee, but it was also a request of North Bennington, uh, right in this room, those who are here, because um, they, uh, the whole Mount Anthony issue, uh, and their protection, and, and for, for North Bennington, and I, I, I probably really not authorized to speak with them for them, but my 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 take on what happened with them. They don't operate for those you know. They do not operate a public school, pre K through six. There's an independent school, so they have school choice. That's near and dear to them, and they want to preserve it. They fought hard to get it, so I get that and I understand that. Under Act 46. It appears that you can't merge districts that have dissimilar grade structures. One can't offer school choice and the other's not. So they, they would potentially lose that and pre-K through six students in North Bennington would end up going to elementary school in the new unified district, which was something that they didn't want to happen. So, there was some talk about leaving Mount Anthony and uh, then having a vote about whether they would actually be non-operating 
pre-K through 12 and have school choice pre-K through 12. <coughs> the problem with that is when union school districts were formed, um, it's kind of a, a binding agreement. There's a, it's not an easy divorce. Uh, if North Bennington wants out of the union school district, um, they have to schedule a vote in their community. If their community votes to let them out, I mean, yes, that they want to leave. Then a vote, have, we have so many days to schedule a vote in all the other districts. And if one district votes that they can't leave, they can't leave. And the whole idea is because the financial structure could fall apart if you know their 11 percent left the district. Um, though, to be fair, and I've been to point it out, well, not all their students would leave. They would still have a high percentage of students who would come here, and we would get tuition revenue as opposed to you know an assessment to them. Um, so we disbanded because North Bennington wanted the ability to get out and take a vote to leave Mount Anthony, which hasn't happened, and now they're saying that they don't intend to take that vote right now. Um, and they weren't the only district. Just felt that they didn't have a full understanding of what the implications of a formal committee did. So that's when our consultant resigned, and then we formed an informal committee, which I believe Nelson's suggestion came from the SU, so that we keep the discussion alive. They had a series of meetings in the informal committee and voted to disband with uh, the recommendation to the SU that all, just that we should form a new formal committee because we had come to the agreement that we should do a modified union, unified school district, hybrid model of governance with all districts labeled advisory. Because under the law, under Act 46, districts, are, when we do our articles of agreement, districts are either advisory or necessary. If they're necessary, they, that community has to vote yes for the merger to go forward. If they're advisory and they vote no, those that vote yes can still form that district. So the idea was let's not bind anybody with the necessary label and make everybody advisory. I think everybody there that night in that informal committee agreed. And it was a good feeling in the room that like we had finally come to an agreement because there was some big change. But there, up until that point, there was still disagreement on governance. Yep. So we come together, we disband. <clears throat> I go to our attorney and ask him to write the motion to form the formal committee. Tell him what the informal, what the study committee had, um, the exploratory committee, sorry, what the exploratory committee had agreed to when they disbanded. And he informed me that he can't write a motion that has those stipulations in it because the authority of who is advisory and who is necessary and the decision of what type of governance only lies with the formal study committee. So we couldn't have those stipulations in the motion. That's when North Bennington kind of went away and they wanted to see in writing Steve Stitzel's opinion on that which I gave them and the issue then for the second time or first time depending if you don't think the first formal committee used the word formal they formed a formal study committee and it takes a while issue <laughs> votes and it goes around to all the different districts to vote who's going to join and this is our first meeting tonight of the formal study committee and uh, <clears throat> With the strong suggestion from the now folded exploratory committee about what direction this committee should go in. But according to our attorney, you are under no obligation. You can still search other options. So 
that's a lot, right? <laughs> um, and there's not going to be a quiz. But yeah. do you mind recapping again the advisory versus necessary? Okay. So my understanding, I and mean, I am, I have lived with this, but I'm no expert. Okay, so let me qualify that. So necessary would mean that, you know, say we've labeled, I'll use it, if we labeled Bennington necessary mm -hmm. for this new form district, and then we take the proposal and they have a ballot election, mm -hmm. which one, right, and it fails, mm -hmm. then the deal's off. Oh. Because we're saying that they're, necessary. they're required, they have to be in this mix. Advisory, and they vote no, and Powell and Woodford and North Bennington and Shaftesbury all vote yes. They can go ahead and form that. Difference. So that basically makes for the modified part of it. Yes. it. It goes. It makes it instead of a unified school district, a modified, modified unified union unified. school. Okay. Yeah. That makes that office. that makes that possible. Yeah. What then happens to the ones that vote no? So that's the great unknown, and because you know that's and North Bennington's email kind of alludes to that that. There are deadlines in the law about if we do nothing or if you're not joining somewhere that by 2018 the state could come down here and say we're taking you here and we're moving you there. Or if we can't come to an agreement by then, then we run the risk that the state will consolidate or unify or rearrange us to their liking without our say in the matter. Don't they become an NMED at that point and still, uh, aren't they still under the uh, new MUUSD board, uh, but they Not have either. their own board as well? Right, so what that what could happen there, and then that would require actually even a third board, so you could have the new unified district. You'd still have the North Bennington Prudential Committee. And then you would need an SU because they would need to buy their services like special education, administrative services. They still have to belong to an SU. So you would consolidate down to three boards in that model and it would uh, uh, protect them, um, give them their school choice that they wanted. But would have to answer how do they fit into Mount Anthony at that because they're still they have ownership in Mount Anthony. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. so I I got on this board originally because I thought there would be some way to make things work out for all of our communities in this community, including North Bennington. I thought there must be some way to work it through. And I'm still not sure there isn't. But but one of the things I wonder is, did you have any conversation with North Bennington? If tonight we voted to only follow the MUUSD with a hybrid at large model or disband again, is there a possibility that they would rejoin us? <clears throat> um, up until I got that email at 2 o'clock today, I would have said yes. And um, I'm not sure where, when they met to discuss that and take that vote, but. Uh, been there at their last meeting, but I was not at their last meeting. I'm not there today. No, I did not go to their to their March meeting, um, and I haven't checked their minutes. I don't know, but um, and you don't do their minutes. So, so do you have some information that might? No, I don't do their. No, no I don't do their. They didn't didn't hear you, sorry. Oh well, no, but I have a question that might bear on this. You didn't mention anything, Jim. You know, in your discussion about governance, on a side by side, when you talked about North Bennington, and you said, "Here's a school district. There's a school that has choice, and none of the others in the in the group has. That they can't, you can't have that in Act 46. But isn't there a, an option for a side by side where those two things could run?" Well, you're referring to last September when Don Russo Savage came and gave the presentation at the firehouse here, and uh, um, that certainly seemed a possibility, and she said that, that at that time she said it was possible. I haven't seen it since. I know North Bennington had talked about uh, that possibility, but 
I still don't know how Mount Anthony fits into that kind of side-by-side. Side. Let's see what else yeah, happens. Well, I think because there is a lot of new members, there's a number of ways to do this, and what we should do is go through, we talk about what, what's been decided by other yeah. boards, but there's there's a lot of things. There's a, what is there, alternative, uh, alternative structures. structures. There's, there's like four or five things, and I think for the board to make a, a good decision, they should understand, especially with some of the legislation that's going with alternative structures this year, mm -hmm. uh, we should understand what we're talking about in that sense. And the other thing I think, and I don't know if everybody knows, you know, I was new to this board a few years ago, and then I got to a point at the SVU, is understanding the structure you have today, because we talk about the MAU and East Individual District, but you have an SVSU also that's responsible for what he's talking about if it was occurring. It, we should really all understand how all the arrows point today because they really go in many directions. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you, you are under no obligation. You heard what I said that Steve Stitzel had given us his opinion on that. You that the exploratory committee had no authority to bind this committee to anything. It's this committee to decide. Yeah. Well, if, if North Bennington truly really doesn't want to be part of this, uh, and and we. When we broke off with North Bennington, they told us that the only possibility they saw, that they thought was a likely possibility going forward was an, was an MUUSD with a hybrid at large voting model. And, and that was where they felt the only place they could fit in. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure about the side-by-side -side thing, and I, have, I haven't focused on it for a long time because I was really focused on if that works for them and it works for us, then maybe we can get forward with that. But, uh, if we want, we can back up. So if, if North Bankton's truly not coming in, then in some ways our job is easier except for the question of what happens with the MAU. Right. But if, if, if we can run that to ground, then the job becomes easier because it becomes much more uh, mechanical in, in terms of figuring out money and buildings and teacher contracts and, and, and getting that thing together uh, in time for the November application, right? I think, I think my fear coming into this is that North Bennington was going to participate but drag their heels. And if they're not going to drag their heels, and they're not even going to be part of this, then it feels to me like we could roll up our sleeves and, and do something we just wouldn't have, we would be at some level splitting up our community because we wouldn't have North Bennington with us. If they don't want to sit so, in, if they don't want to sit in, then get, you know, do it without them. Don't even consider them. Let them worry about North Bennington if that's what they want to do. We're worried about everybody else. Do our job and let them do theirs. Simple as that. So, um, my question, Don, was the, the the model that everyone had been talking about. The question was, what happens with with MAU? What do you mean by that exactly? What happens to the board? What happens? Well, to I don't know what. How I mean, the <clears throat> problem is is MAU is a board that represents at large community of right, all right. the towns. North Bennington has representation on the MAU board for their seven through 12. So what do you do with that chunk of kids or money? Because it's like the Shaftesbury, if, you know, if we go in this direction, our kids already go to MAU, yep. we just have to assign the Shaftesbury kids to this new board for the K through six. North Bennington doesn't have the option because their K through six is a school choice, but they have, they have yeah skin in the game because of MAU. And I, I think that actually answers answers the question because I um, I was researching the statutes on this and uh, one of the reasons why I mentioned that it seems like this is a study committee that's formed by the town that's considering a unified union district. And so therefore, the union district that exists does not take part. Right. And I'm, I'm talking about, I'll, it's um, Title 16, Section 701B and subsection B of that says, and I'll just read it. If the proposed union school district is to be uni a unified union school district, however, only town districts and incorporated districts may participate in the joint study and vote on its formation. So that's what I was thinking about in terms of what MAU does. What follows that is a successful vote to form a un unified union school district dissolves any pre-existing union school district within its borders. And there's some more about what assets happen to that, but that to me answers what happens to MAU, is it disappeared. 
Well, that's true. But it does yeah. disappear, but if North Bennington won't vote on it, we don't yeah. North Bennington would have to have some sort of vote regarding yeah. that portion of it. They they own it. They own a yeah. portion. I mean, I mean, the way I you know picture in my head is when you vote on making this new committee, we all vote to dissolve and roll in this new committee. So effectively, we would shut down MEU and go to this new thing. Right. North Bennington, if we all vote to get out MEU, close it down and go in this new committee, North Bennington would have to be part of that. If they say no, then we have to vote for them to get out MEU, which means. Council could have six people vote and say, nah, we're gonna keep North Bennington in, then they're still But North Bennington would have to have to vote on that. Yeah, or too. if we yes. have a union district that doesn't include North Bennington. Yeah. So then it would be dissolved. I do think we're gonna get with need to get a legal opinion yeah. on this. Yeah. 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 Change it to the block today because uh, as Donald right. mentioned, we we're under the impression that if we met, we got this committee started, and if we it looked like we were going to go with the hybrid model and everybody was advisory. North Bennington was then going to vote. And I think it was our hope that then they would vote and join this committee. Even if some of the communities yeah. weren't advisory but were necessary, we still could have moved forward with anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but if they if we do an MUUSD hybrid at large model and they don't want to come in on that. I'm not sure what that means yet. That does nothing, right? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> so that seems like the first order of business is figuring out what is talking to your Steve Stitzel or somebody yeah. who knows. Yeah, uh, and there is a, a gentleman that's hired Joshua Borman is his name. He is the Act 46 consultant that is paid jointly by the School Board Association and the Superintendents Association. So I need to pose him that question that was, because he should be able to highlight what was explained to us last, um, I guess, for me, what someone, needs to answer is how do we move forward can we all consolidate without North Bennington even though they're part of what is our middle school and high school right now I think th 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 would you agree that that's the most important question to answer? yeah I, but I think that again I'm going back to how many people knew here the people that came down and presented us to us all the options I think we'll come back again and present the options, and I think they're the ones to ask the question of because they're telling you what you can do, can you do versus us waiting for a consultant. And they said they were ready to come down if we needed them. Mm -hmm. I think they yeah. would come quicker. They would present their thing, show you the side by side, was, uh, and everything. Don Russo Savage, who mm -hmm. works for AOE, and those who don't go. So uh, then you'll get. So, so, so could, could we do that for the yeah. at our next yeah. meeting? Could I we will see? see if, yeah. Could we make our next meeting around answering that question? Because I'll contact you tomorrow. I think a guiding now. principle of this group is that we don't want to waste our time if it's if it's pointless. Yeah. So tell us, our, tell us our options. Yes, yeah. yeah. let's find out what the options are, and then uh, you know, then we can right. talk I mean, about calendar. What's practices. the point of looking for a consultant, hiring a consultant if someone's going to say you can't your, your right. options are cut off? So let's figure out what our options are, and then if we have good options, let's look at, into a consultant and calendaring the rest yeah. of the summer. Okay. Yeah. Can we have um, bullet points of, of the issues that have to be presented by November? So we can address the issues, as, you know, one by one to make sure we have them all instead of going through a bunch of baloney for nothing and it's not necessary or missing something that is necessary that has to be addressed. Well, I think that template <coughs> addresses most, like probably 90% of it, I think, in the end of the game. Um, you know, a lot of it we already do through SBSU. Uh, you know, basically comes down to what's the board structure going to look like mm -hmm. yeah. in the end and how you can divvy up the buildings. But there, there are a lot more. There's a second document that would have to go with. It's like, you know, we had a we had a draft of it back almost a year ago, so it's probably obsolete. But uh, like, there's a form that we have to submit to the state with this, like an application for consolidation, right? And we have to list like where we identify savings and things like that. So it's an old it's a it's an old document. It was a draft by us, but it's is, not. Is there something on the line that I? thought at the site that basically specifies what we're our yeah. goals and what we're so supposed to have. The Agency of Education website maintains a section just on Act 46 
I did look today, at, you know, they haven't updated it yet no, on what has happened in this legislative session yet. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get Dick in here before we go too far. No, I just want to say that, that what we've been working on is our, the articles of agreement, which may be the bullet points you're looking for, John. Yeah, and just something we so, started we, going yeah, through, so yeah. we make sure everything's addressed. Yeah. So you're not Were you able to print this out? Do you need a copy of this? If it's a document, if it's a word doc, I don't print them out. I can't. Right, yeah, you can have that I can do uh, PDF and all yeah. that. No more so Thank you. It, so did the new members receive the MAU? Uh, uh, probably not. So it, it no. probably would be worth yeah. asking out the, the SU to current send. MAU agreement. The current MAU agreement, which is really very readable. It's just a few pages. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, uh, as opposed to the stuff we're working on now. <laughs> Um, and that'd be probably a really good thing to have everybody look at. And then maybe if at the next meeting we could, uh, I'll send it out. Send, send that out right yeah, away. Right away. Yeah. Uh, I'll send it to all members just in case any even older members don't. Uh, other yeah. board member, uh, other members from the previous committees, were there documents that were complete, were, were really helpful for you getting started on this? I just want to add, if you're going to send out documents, one of the things that we were missing was the, um, statement of values was incomplete and one of the things we're going to be talking about is who's going to absorb everybody's debts and how that's going to be accomplished because we have to do this as part of right. the consolidation and we, we, and we, we don't know what we're we worth. We didn't get that far, right? That's true. And let's, yeah. before we actually go too deep in the financials, let's make sure that we have a way forward, a path forward. So I think Nelson's, I think Nelson's right about that. Let's, let's put all our chips on figuring out if there is a route forward. Get out North Bennington. Create the base and move on it. And if, any, if in the meantime anybody hears from North Bennington that they would gladly join us uh, if we did an MUSD hybrid at large, let us know. Can I? Look, go ahead. Uh, Barry Mayer, just visiting from Shaftesbury. Yeah. Um, I wonder, first of all, if North Bennington can do nothing. In other words, they can't exist alone in, in this state's statutory provisions for education. So they, they have to do They something. recognize that. They, I think they have a, I so, think they so have what a I think they've done is they, they are probably saying in, in, in a back inside out way that they're probably going to have to go along with whatever this committee decides. They just don't want to participate in it. They don't want to be complicit. Let's you know we let's not spend too much time speculating yes, on their motives. I guess. No, but I think it's important because somebody mentioned earlier that that's 11 percent of the budget. It, you can't count them out. That you're never going we'll to. That 11 percent is always going to be. There. It's important, but they they have also been putting a lot of hopes into legislative fixes and, and things like that, which we spent a lot of time speculating about at the last yeah. meeting, and it, it frankly wasn't. It didn't I mean, really take us forward because I mean, we just didn't. My feeling is at the end of the day is North Bank is going to need to be. Pitching to hold into, you know, SPSU or some type of mud, whether it be us or Bank Hill Valley. But if the state does it, they're going to pick the most obvious one, which I might guess is down here because of location. Is there so, another question over here somewhere? It was along the same lines. Oh. Um. So, is there a possibility that if from some of the conversation, is there a possibility that if we don't have another option without them, that we can't do anything? Yeah, if, if we, Jim, let me yeah. risk how I, in, in stupid layman's term, the way I think of this, if, if we can't move forward because we can't get them out of the MAU board and we have to combine with the MAU board, then I think we're at a stalemate. Mm -hmm. And then we just sit back and we, it's there's no the point in doing do this committee and the state comes do down and tells us how it's going right. to be and they, and, and it, exactly as Jim said, one of the risks of that is, is not so much for Bennington, frankly, but for Pownall and Woodford and some of the other communities that would potentially um, be kind of obliterated by a proportional voting mechanism. So I think what we discovered when we did the numbers before was that Bennington would have something like 19 votes, you know, to Pownall's one or something like that. And, and so the hybrid at large model was really trying to acknowledge that we're a larger community and that we can catch that larger community by all voting on the same people but saying we do want to sprinkle um, sprinkle the representation around. 
So I think that's actually a, it's worked really well for Mount Anthony. Yeah. And I think it's something that would be worth holding on to and worth continuing through the summer for, even if it, just for that. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I understood that stalemate situation, because that's what that's how I understood the conversation that we just had, and so I just wanted to make sure that it was I will like push it. and pursue with both the consultant to the school board association and to the AOE that uh, we need an answer on on that issue immediately, that what are the options open to us if not all members of the unified school district that already exists are participating in the discussion? And, uh, and can we get somebody, when, I can, we, and then we can schedule me with that answer, but I also, what I'm hearing is what their availability to come down and talk to us again. Because maybe North Bennington doesn't realize that they could potentially be putting the community at large in that situation. Maybe they think that there is that possibility that they can just be placed, then individually placed. Well, it sounds from their email that right. they do think that. Yeah. They, they right. said they know that we're going to So that's why I, I making they, sure that we're communicating that to yeah, them, if I, that I is to, the situation, I think would be important. But Donald's point is valid. We right. want to make sure that that is mm -hmm. actually real so that Correct. we're not down here going through this hypothesis. You know, right. Well, yeah. well, if I heard earlier, everybody could vote. And if they were voting, they voted no, they'd stand alone anyways, and yes. the rest would be together. Mm -hmm. So it's I don't see much different than I'm not sitting at the table, because really they're saying no. Yeah. And if that's true, then they'll, they'll be, the rest will join and it'll be set aside. So my suggestion would be that we, um, unless people have want to mull this over more that we ask Jim to send around those two documents to all members just you know if you would I guess and and that we not maybe not schedule another meeting until you're able to set up something with Donna Russo Savage solid uh, from representative to come down, to come down and give us with the authority bald facts yeah. so the two die I have the <laughs> MAU agreement the second document Sorry. that you wanted sent I want to make sure that she knows we're going to be asking some specific questions, yeah. which you have already listed. Yeah. So when we schedule it, there's some things we'll, we're going to be looking for. Okay. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. The MAU yeah. current agreement. The MAU, and then I think uh, Dick had mentioned it, it would be nice for it to have complete financials if, if they're available. I know it's early. I just know that it was incomplete before. For example, Woodford has no values. So, so if, if we so. do, if we're optimistic that we're going to move forward and we are going to do some work, that's going to be a doc document we're going to need to really lean on. So yeah, I'm just might suggesting we get that, we get that in yeah. the works. Doesn't have to go out immediately. Yeah, that's good thinking, Dick. Okay. So any other um, any other thoughts or reservations, questions? Um, would it be helpful? for new members to schedule a time, a sort of a informal question and answer period with. Yeah, I've got some from tonight, so All right. I can reach out to you. I mean, do you think it might be possible, Jim, for you to just have a informal, Absolutely. I guess there's a quorum thing we have to yeah. deal with, but is there a way that people could get to you and just ask the questions that they're not comfortable asking yeah, on TV? I will, um, I'm very to reach out to all the new members tomorrow. and We can send you an email if we have a question. Yeah. And then you can respond. Yep. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's great. Because, I mean, similar to how, I, you know, those of you that are regular board members, I did one-on-one -on -one meetings with you all when you came on board. I could do, and I'll just be conscious of what the quorum is, so maybe I'll do, like, groups of three or something like that, so that I go over and invite you and give you a couple of times that I'd be available to answer all your questions and well, there's two binders here full of documents, a lot of them that are automatically, all are already obsolete, but uh, certainly we there's, we have a nice overview once of question and answers and facts and questions on uh, Act 46. Right. Send so them the web page if you have it so that okay. they know where to go for the state, because yeah. that'll answer a lot of questions if you right. go to the state web page, because there's questions there that isn't been answered. It's pretty overwhelming. I'll send everyone that one. Yeah, it, it, there's it's a lot pretty overwhelming. There. I think, you know, a few pointed questions to Jim might really yeah. help get things up. All right. Uh, all in favor of calling a night and waiting to hear from Jim on the next meeting? I'll move the motion to adjourn. Second. Let's go. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.